Hello everyone, I'm Matt Williamson, how are you? Um, as you know, I'm sure by now, Cameron Sutton has been suspended for the first eight games of the season. He has publicly said he's not going to appeal it, he just wants all of it to be behind him. And I know I'm a day late on this, but frankly, I don't even think it's that big of news. I, I'll, I'll be honest, when the, when the came out, I thought, hmm, I thought it'll probably be six, so eight was a little higher than I thought, but all the allegations are pretty nasty. I mean, so I totally get it, and I have no problem with it. I don't think the Steelers are shocked by it one bit, so don't look at it that way, and that, that's, that's kind of what I want to talk about. Like, I think the Steelers knew this, and Sutton knew this when they signed him. That's why they got him for league minimum. That's why he's here and not somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. They trust the the person to be a better person. And I'm not here to talk about the off the field stuff. I'm just talking about the impact and where do we go from here. So again, I, I don't think this is hardly even news. I mean, we knew a suspension was coming, a substantial one. This was the max from what I understand. And okay, I think everyone knew that. So I think you get Sutton back. So coincidentally, you get him for week 10 because he has to sit eight games. Then he has a whole bye week to get reacclimated, which I think is good for him. Then he joins the team. And at that point, you might be like, man, slot corner situation's awful. It might be great. They maybe have figured out something since then. Maybe one of your starting outside guys is hurt and you can't wait to get Cam Sutton in to replace Porter. I mean, uh, we know how this league works, but he will be a very welcome addition in the most difficult stretch of the season against a lot of AFC North teams, which he should be familiar with. So again, I think this was something we expected. Now, where does that leave the status of the cornerback position? It's still up in the air, of course. Um, I want to start with one thing that I guess Patrick Peterson, who's got a podcast and I don't listen to it. This is secondhand information, but is very much in the public eye. I think he has a future in media. I remember talking to him when Steelers signed him. He's very, very impressive. Obviously, he's unemployed at the moment, but he was talking on his podcast just the other day that there is a more than ever, and I agree with him, defensive backs on the open market right now, you know, second week in July that are NFL football players. And I think one of the reasons that's true is a lot of those dudes, much like Peterson, have never done special teams or can't be trusted with special teams. These these old dogs, do I want to treat, you know, teach them the new trick of how do I cover this new kickoff role? So I think a lot of teams are rolling with young guys, groom them how to learn this kickoff role and not just have them for a year or they've never been able to do it. They're not willing to do it at this stage of their career. So there are a lot of NFL players out there. I mean, Justin Simmons is one of the only guys in the secondary that I look at and say is a potential star, but there's plenty of options to be determined. And I often equate it to Quan Alexander from a year ago. You know, if we had a conversation on July 9th, 2023, Quan Alexander would not have been in the mix. We might be talking about, boy, the Steelers linebackers are kind of thin. I don't know what to count on with Holcomb and Roberts. They're new. Is Robinson going to take a step forward? where midway through camp or whatever it was, they grabbed Quan Alexander. And I think that's very well could be the case with another slot corner, with another member of the secondary. And there's many, many options. You know, Shannon Sullivan's still out there. Was he great last year? No, but you could live with Sullivan for eight games and know what you're getting, plug him in there, super cheap. They have the money. Sutton replaces him when he comes back or whatever. BetOnline is your number one source for all your summer sports this season, from baseball, golf, and so many more. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So pulling up the Steeler depth chart from our, ourlads.com, the corners that are listed here are Porter and Dante Jackson as the outside guys. Agreed. That's set in stone now. Now, 
I think there's three young guys to talk about that I'm going to lump together. That's Corey Trice, that's Darius Rush, and that's Ryan Watts, all of whom are very young. We know very little about. They know more about them, especially Trice and Rush, because they were with the team last year. But I think there's obvious talent with all three players. They all have size. I don't expect any to be in the starting nickel conversation. I know a lot of people are like, Trice will just plug right in. That's not what he is. I mean, he is a long, lanky, lanky Joey Porter type guy, as are these other two. Watts could be more of the safety corner, big slot, maybe. I'm more excited to see him. I know less about him than Rush or Trice. But I put these three together because I think you look at them and say, if I can hit on any one of them, not as a slot, as an outside corner, that's worth it. One out of three there would be great to be your number three corner, maybe even Jackson's replacement before long, first guy off the bench, dime corner, that type of thing. If you get two out of three, you're doing cartwheels. But I think a lot of fans, you guys listening, look at it like, man, they got two stars there in Russian Trice and Watson and, and, and throw in that mix and they're loaded at corner. I don't see it that way. I think a lot of these guys are the the cherry on top. Whatever you get out of them is wonderful. And hopefully one of them really shines in camp. It would be unbelievable if two do. But you got nothing involved in these guys. You paid nothing for Rush. You paid a sixth round pick for Watts and a seventh round pick for Trice. Trice's college <clears throat> tape was a lot better than a seventh round pick. He fell for uh, obvious reasons with his, his durability and you know that type of thing, injuries. But it's not like he would have gone in the first three rounds. I mean, he was a fourth or fifth round prospect that you got in the seventh and did some th- good things in camp, et cetera. I don't see any of these guys as a slot, but I'm super psyched that you have three big corners. They're after big corners that all have a chance, you know, a, a chance to be more than just bottom of the roster dudes, maybe contributors, maybe even starters. The other dudes to talk about here are Beanie Bishop, uh, another rookie, Josiah Scott, who's a name you might not know much about, but you should, and Anthony of Averett. Averett, I'm not pronouncing his name perfectly, of Averett is an, an older dude All these dudes are slot onlys to me. Maybe they could do a little bit outside, but you project them for slot. So I think those three, Bishop, Scott, and Averett, are going to really compete, and it's going to be fun to watch in Latrobe, that those three are all going to probably rotate with the first and second team, see who stands out, three dogs, one bone, maybe two of them make the team, who knows. But Averett's been around the block. He at least has the experience. He's never been great, but he's probably at the point of his career. If he doesn't stick with this team, he might not get another shot. He's going to be desperate. Actually, all three of these guys are desperate at their careers. None of them have pedigree. None of them are guaranteed to be football players below, you know, past this season. I like some things we've seen. We know about Scott. He's been around the league a little bit as well. I kind of give him the leader in the clubhouse, you know, chance. He's 25 years old. He's okay. You know, I mean, he's a tough guy. He can battle in the slot. He can blitz a little bit. All these guys can play the run a little bit. Beanie Bishop is also attractive. Now, I don't think by any stretch, any of these three are going to be high-end slot corners. Like the the Steelers, Sutton aside, do not have a top 10 slot corner on this roster. I think you just want someone that is tough, that's a special teamer, that your pass rush can help hide a little bit. They're cutting corner at slot corner. And then Sutton inevitably returns and you step it up. You just want to survive for two months. And I think that combination, you just need to know those names is why I'm bringing them up. Anthony Averett, Josiah Scott, Beanie Bishop. They're all different stages of their career. They all sort of profile to be that type of undersized, tough guy, slot corner that'll mix it up that aren't superstars. They're not going to test off the chart. They're not six feet with long arms like Rush or Trice or Watts or anything like that. They're not going to look like those dudes, but they're desperate, they're tough, and there's opportunity for them. And you got three bites at that apple along with, like what Peterson said, 
a wealth of other dudes out there that have been around the block that you could get for league minimum to fill this gap for two months, you know, and I don't think it's all that big a deal. I mean, I think you'll find something. I think as we have these podcasts, as camp goes along, one of them will shine. You know, one of those three young guys will probably stand out from the other. One of those three slots will probably stand out from the other. And that's what camp's all about. You know, you just distinguish yourself against your competition, which in this case are teammates. So it's not perfect, but of those six players I just highlighted, if two of them end up being high quality dudes, fine. And again, I'm not talking about superstars here. I'm talking about quality contributors in your nickel package, maybe in your dime. If three end up being legit NFL players, you're in really good shape. So there's enough bites to that apple at corner without Sutton that I think you're okay. And there's definitely a parachute there that you could call Sullivan Peterson. I could give you 20 other names of defensive backs out there that will be NFL players that are currently unemployed. So not the end of the world. Uh, I has, I did this uh, Sutton podcast a day late on purpose because I don't think it's huge. I really don't. I think it's to be expected and everyone knew it was coming. So that's that. All right, guys, take care.